Good morning. My name is Lisa, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the CA Service Management Community webcast conference call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. Alan Hoop, you may begin your conference. Thank you, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. My name is Alan Haupt. I'm with CA's Product Marketing Group for our Service Management Solutions. I also have with me today Dale Clark and Roger Morse from our Product Management Team. We'll be going through a presentation and demonstration of some new features uh, of CA Service Management 14.1. Um, please note that for the Q&A, you can also click on the Q&A button on your screens and uh, enter questions that way as well, and we'll be monitoring that and replying. So in today's webcast, what I'd like to cover is, first of all, 14.1, the release context, what our thinking is behind what we're bringing to market here in the next several weeks. Uh, solution enhancements that focus on the context of solution, which is really where this marketplace is heading in terms of service catalog, service desk, asset management. We really are bringing things together and the market is evolving towards this broader service management solution that encompasses all of these capabilities with common user interfaces and other capabilities. So we'll talk about the solution perspective here and what this release brings, as well as specific product enhancements. Then a demonstration and roadmap, and we'll summarize uh, at the end. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about context behind where we you know, get our ideas and where we're bringing these products from and to. I, we take a very persona-focused fo approach to things. We look at three, typically three, but there are, you know, breakdowns within each of these in terms of personas. Uh, we look at the business consumers who are the end-end -end users that uh, are the majority users of the solutions. The decision makers who are leveraging the solution to you know, try to increase adoption of this service management solution, improve maturity. They want to make sure that they have insight into the productivity and the cost and the benefits that the business is gaining from the use of a service management solution. And then the power users, which are the folks that you know, make sure that the business consumers are getting what they want, that the decision makers are getting what they want. These are the service desk analysts, the asset managers, and another you know, set of folks that we would consider more technical than the business consumers and in most cases the decision makers as well. So we look at these folks and you know, each has their own demands that they're placing on vendors and they are driving the evolution of this uh, service management market and they really are the ones driving towards this solution focus. You know, the business consumers We've had releases in the past focused very heavily on the uh, user interface, the self-service, uh, consumer-like experience, um, and that continues. And uh, you know, so you'll see elements of that in the release as well. So you take these types of the demands that are coming from these types of uh, personas, and you cross that with what do we need to do in terms of business value? We need to increase productivity. We need to improve the user satisfaction, the user experience. We want to make better decisions, and we also want to reduce the cost of leveraging service management technology. So if you cross those three folks with these four areas, these are the things that are really driving our product roadmaps, you know, in addition to obviously the input from the user community as well and customers. But these are the broad, uh, broad level uh, items that are driving our roadmap. And the result is really what we call CA service management, what we bring to you today, um, whether you're using specific products from this solution, you know, asset manager, service desk manager, or service catalog, um, and other supporting technologies. But we really are focusing on more of a service management solution perspective. Um, you know, we list a lot of the capabilities here. I'm not going to go through all of those. At the bottom are the three different types of personas. And again, trying to drive the, the you know, satisfaction, the cost, the process efficiency, the productivity, the business risk uh, down in most cases. So. Um, Let's drill down into 14.1 and what we're bringing out in this release. And again, we're going to talk from a service level, a solution perspective first, then we'll drill down into individual product functions. Um, there are 
six main areas that we'll be focusing on in the presentation. Uh, the lower cost of ownership, we're going to talk about some changes we've made to the installation, the upgrade, the administration, and the maintenance across the solution. We're going to talk about some quick value content out of the box off services that we're providing with this release. We're going to talk about changes that we've made to the user experience and how we're unifying that across the solution from both a self-service perspective and a mobility perspective. And I think you'll see some in the demonstration, we're going to let the, that speak for itself really. You're going to see some really, really nice user experience uh, changes that have been made. And we also are going to talk about business value reporting, uh, reports that start to focus on the costs and the productivity and how these are driving business value through service management. And then we'll also talk about core product enhancements, specific features relative to the individual products versus the overall solution. So the first thing I want to talk about is a packaging edition that we have. And I'll, I'll call this catalog bundles, but in effect what this is, is there'll be some new packages that we'll bring out that will have a bring service catalog as a combination with Service Desk Manager or with ITAM. So you can get ITAM and Service Catalog, Service Desk Manager and Catalog in a service management bundle. Uh, the reason we're doing this is we're starting to see a, a blurring of, I'll, I'll call it unified self-service, which is a capability we rolled out uh, a while back and which evolved from open space, if you're familiar with CA open space from years ago. Um, the unified self-service is really blurring with the delivery of the services because the delivery of the services or the availability of the services has to be part of that self-service user interface. So, you know, o over the years we've seen the uh, the uh, the, con the convergence of things like knowledge uh, knowledge management or knowledge tools, uh, support automation, CMDB, and other capabilities become just parts of the core offering of Service Desk. And we actually, a year or so ago, year and a half ago, introduced the Unified Self-Service, or CA Open Space, brought that in as a core component to the Service Desk, which really is becoming you know, a bigger and bigger hub, which is really becoming what we're calling service management. And you know, with this release, we're not you know, merging catalog in at this point from a technology perspective it does look like it is one integrated solution with self-service, the delivery of the services, and the availability of the services. Um, but what we've done is brought these new packages to the marketplace to let to allow customers who are moving more towards this solution perspective to, you know, bring those two products to get in together at the same time. And that en enables us to deliver services through this unified self-service uh, seamlessly. In terms of lower cost of ownership. We've had some very significant changes here. I'm going to talk first about the smart install and upgrades. We now have a common installation across the CA service management solution. Um, so whether you're you know, leveraging Service Desk, Asset Manager, or, IT, or Service Catalog in combinations, you will have a single installation that has a smart concept to it, which will enable, enable us to discover what elements of the solutions are already installed across the environment to configure, validate, actually deploy and install, and then validate and summarize the installation all through one common install. Same thing for upgrades. So that's a new feature that will be impactful to our existing customer base, helping them lower their cost of ownership in terms of the installs and the updates. The other thing that we've added is common administration. And this is where leveraging that uh, those bundles with service catalog allows us to deliver services that are focused on the administrators of the solution. So in the past where we've had the unified self-service, which has been focused predominantly on the business consumers with uh, you know, delivering the collaboration and the knowledge search and all, all the things that open space and the unified self-service have brought out over the years. We now are delivering services through the Unified Self-Service, which focus on administrators. And we'll see these, some of these in the demonstration as well, but managing users, roles, tenants, if you're using the multi-tenancy feature, configurations, and some other things, having all those delivered to the administrators within the Unified Self-Service as services. 
just like a business consumer would have services. And you'll see some of these in just a second, new services like password reset and some other things that they will have available to them. So this common administration capability, again, along the lines of this you know, drive towards a solution, common administration, common install, common self-server user, service user interface across the solution um, with, as I said, some new services that we'll be making available. So that's the uh, total cost of ownership perspective. From the unified user experience, let's talk, say, take a look at how we're improving user satisfaction. Now, we had a great release uh, back in December, uh, December January timeframe of the, you know, the, about 10, 12 months ago, and we introduced the uh, unified self-service, which was a, a great upgrade to the original uh, a open space solution, and we brought that out in uh, that release. And um, in this release, we actually have gone a, a step further in modernizing the look and feel of this. Um, we have a common user interface standard that we're employing across CA. This is one of the first technologies to leverage that. And you can see some screen captures here. It's very, very um, you know, soothing, I guess is a good word to call it. Um, it, it. It's gotten great reviews from the customer validations that we've done during the agile development process for it, as well as in the analyst community. We've had great feedback from the analysts. So I, I, I think it uh, is a nice step in terms of the modernization of the self-service capability. It has very much an iOS 7 look and feel, you know, whether you're looking at it through the browser or through the mobile, uh, mobile app, it'll, it'll have the same look and feel. Uh, we have also added capabilities to deliver various types of quick value content. Just like we did for administrators, we have the ability to, we have delivered quick value content for the business users here, such as set, resetting their passwords, a service that's available to them through self-service. Uh, service ideation, if they want to uh, put, put forth ideas about new um, services that they want IT to deliver to them. Um, asset fulfillment, if they're leveraging asset, you know, CA Asset Manager as a uh, technology, they can fulfill their assets directly through this. And we'll talk about some of the other features and services that are delivered uh, along these lines. But the idea is to make the users more productive improve their satisfaction and their experience by automating as much as possible and delivering everything in a very much a consumer type app that they expect to use, you know, at work as well as, you know, that looks similar to those apps they use at home. Um, the other thing I'll talk about, and we'll hit this more when we talk about some ITAM uh, specifics, but a my resources capability for customers that, have, that are using the, the um, IT asset manager in conjunction with catalog, you have the ability to have the uh, My Resources, which uh, delivers a view of all of the IT assets, and again, it's delivered as a service through this self-service user interface. Uh, all the assets, hardware, software, and so forth, and in taking action on them and viewing them right within the context of the uh, self-service, being able to collaborate with other users and talk about them and so forth. So again, delivering this common user experience across the full CA service management solution. Um, page forward here. And the last thing I'm going to talk about from a solution perspective is decision making and business value reporting. We're delivering with this release some new reports that are focused very much on cost and productivity within the organization. So being able to understand the cost of service disruptions, being able to understand the productivity of different uh, support groups and, you know, different components within the uh, organizational hierarchy of the support team and so forth. So being able to have these out-of-the-box reports and dashboards that focus on, you know, service demand, they focus on service performance, and uh, looking at these key metrics and, um, you know, having them interwoven within the, uh, the business uh, hierarchy, if you will, the business units. So we'll, uh, this is a, a very uh, strong feature. Uh, Roger, Roger Morshire on the line here, why don't you provide a little bit more context on that because I know there's a lot more than I'm spelling out here. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan. Hi, everyone. This is Roger Morse. I'm one of the product managers on the CA Service Management Solution. Appreciate everyone being here today. So what we're trying to do here with, with these business value dashboards is really bring another level of information forward so that 
team leads, managers, executives will have additional information about the life cycle of a ticket, how much it might cost in, you know, as it goes through the, the, the various stages of its life cycle. And we've introduced a, a couple of, of methods to do that uh, you know, as, a first, as, a, as a first attempt. And over time, these business value dashboards are going to get you know, better, we'll add more of them, we'll improve their output. But, our, our first uh, uh, approach was to really try to dive down into you know, how, what are some of the costs around you know, actually managing a ticket. When it's managed by this group or by this individual, how much does it cost? How do I aggregate, get, ag aggregate that information so that I can get a better understanding of what it does indeed cost in order to do a change order, in order to do a, a ticket request, whatever it might be. So a new approach to some of the things that you as customers have been asking for, as well as our industry analysts have been directing us towards. I think we're, it's going to provide quite a bit of additional value, and we look forward to hearing your feedback on that. Back to you, Alan. Thanks, Roger. All right, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Dale Clark, and he's going to talk a little bit about the product-specific enhancements. So what we've talked about so far are solution capabilities, if you're leveraging you know, multiple of the uh, technologies, uh, leveraging uh, CA Service Catalog to have those new services delivered uh, to you uh, within the user self-service. Now let's drill down into product-specific enhancements. So Dale? Okay, and this will be fairly brief on, on this side of it. Uh, Really, the intention here is to show that we've got a lot of activity going on with the with the product level you know enhancements as well as what we're looking at from that overall solution approach. Now, many of the enhancements that we're dealing with are those elements that are coming from this community, you know, the global service management community through the ideas and the ideation approach that we've got within this community. So many of the elements that we've been working on wouldn't necessarily rise to the level that, you know, perhaps would get the marketing side of the world excited, but things like right-click, copy, and paste, you know, being able to upload multiple attachment uh, files at once, these, these are all elements that, you know, we, we recognize are going to drive you know the the productivity and the, and the and the value that the users are going to be seeing from this as well. So you know, going in, eliminating the need for a uh, for a MySQL uh, store from the uh, unified self service side, being able to tie it back in with the normal SQL or, ODB, or or Oracle DBMSs. These are all the kinds of elements that we've been focused on. So as we've moved forward with these, it's really helped us rather uh, dramatically to ensure that we keep our, you know, keep a focus on that uh, community side of things. Now, if you step to the next slide, Alan, uh, on, on, the, on the service catalog side, you know, an incredible amount of 14.1 is very focused on the, the entire unified self-service approach. And as you've seen, for us to create that solution, the catalog is a very central function within there because the request management is such an important element to unified self-service for us. So there's been a lot of broad improvements to the, the catalog capabilities, you know, just in general, but we've specifically also focused on making sure that we're improving the service designer, improving the forms that sit behind these services so that you can lay them out in a much more efficient and effective manner, you know, because many of the services that you're dealing with, the, the things that you're going to see, although we've created additional out-of-box content for those services, the expectation is that these are going to be elements that you're going to be uh, creating, enhancing, adding to, and going from there. And then, of course, just making sure that we've enhanced that user experience within those widgets themselves. Next slide, please. And on the IT asset manager side, you know, we've really continued that long-term evolution of drawing in the software asset management capacity with this, 
as well so that we're dealing more gracefully with the multi-tenancy capabilities, tying that back in, making sure that, you know, importing data is is more simple and straightforward than perhaps we had it in our uh, our first couple of releases that included that capability. But we've also been putting a lot of effort into making sure that the day-to-day -day activities of the asset manager are simplified by improving the abilities to move data from you know point you know to create some of this data with things like asset copy and being able to establish a better reconciliation on the hardware side, as well as fleshing out a little bit more on the financial management side and really putting a lot of focus on the usability and performance improvements for the underpinning product itself. So these are the areas that we've really been looking at for 14.1. Uh, we can't obviously Dive, you know, dive into each and every one of the elements that's in here that's spelled out as part of the documentation for the uh, for the uh, products themselves. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a high level as to what we're uh, doing with this, and to remind you that uh, an incredible amount of our prioritization on the product management side is really driven by what we see in those user communities and the ideas section. So we really appreciate the, um, the involvement that the community has, and we are going to continue to focus on those elements. So with that, um, I think we've got one more item to talk about, and it, it, it sort of dials back in on the IT management side where we're looking at an element that we're referring to as my resources. Now, this is a service that we've created that really is intended to showcase how pulling the information from your asset management system can really take your self-service experience and boost it up drastically because it pulls the information about your resources and puts it together with the kinds of actions that people are going to want to be able to do for, you know, being able to, you know, request related services, you know, update or refresh things that have to be uh, going on on a particular time frame, being able to see warranty expirations, all that type of thing at the personal level. So it's very, uh, very important element for us to be able to show off how some of these solution level uh, items really tie it all back together and uh, provide that broader service management experience. Yeah. I think Roger is going to actually show some of this in the demonstration as well. So. And that's a great segue. We should have Roger do some demo. Yes, it is. Roger, I'm going to pass it over to you for now. Okay, great. I'm just, I'm just answering a couple of questions here in the Q&A, so just give me a quick second here. Okay. All right, so um, Roger will take us through a demonstration. He'll show you the uh, unified self-service. Now, we're not probably not going to drill down into all the features that you've had in the unified self-service capability, the collaboration, and the, uh, maybe we'll take a look at the knowledge base or something like that. But um, this is really to show you the differences, the new services that have been added, the new look and feel of this, and how we've really woven asset management, request management, and service desk and incident and problem management all into one user interface and, you know, deliver this through a service uh, paradigm, if you will. So, Roger, take it away. That's great. Thank you very much, Alan. So what I'm showing you right now today is the front end of, of the component we call unified self-service. This is our go-forward method for bringing all of the self-service elements from Service Desk Manager, from Service Catalog, from ITAM into one place, into a single pane of glass that the business consumer who is, who is using the services that IT is providing can interact with IT either directly, by creating a ticket directly, by requesting a service, by, com by interacting with communities, uh, by posting questions, all in one place in a very easy to consume, very consumerized look and feel that we that based upon the feedback that we've gotten over our customer validation sessions is, is proving to be very usable 
and much appreciated by the people who have to deal with who have to interact with with IT on a daily basis. Let me just talk about some of the things that we have here on the home screen. So at the very top, we have the three things that we believe most business consumers are going to be doing when they come to unified self-service. They can either report, a t you know, report an issue, which means create a ticket. They can request a service. They need something from IT. And there's lots of services that can be created. We're providing some service content out of the box. We have lots of customers out there using catalog that have created tens and tens and sometimes hundreds and hundreds of services. That's up to you. And we also have the ability to immediately interact with the community to ask a question about you know, particular things. We can see the announcements from Service Desk Manager. We can see what's trending. We can see some of the latest questions from the community. We can also see the requests that I have open and the status of that request. And if I have multiple requests, I, I might see one or two more on the screen. If I have you know, many requests, I can, I can drill in and I can see them all. So we, we brought together an enormous amount of information across the solution into this one place, into this single pane of glass for the business consumer. So as a business consumer, I, I, you know, my name is Jackie Brown and, and I'm a marketing manager and I'm requesting stuff from IT all the time and I have a team and I have to you know, do various things. So when I come in here and, and I, and I you know, need to interact, you know, I know that you know, I need to go and you know, look for a request because I just got a new iPad and I'm trying to get it on the corporate VPN network. So there's a, a lot of ways that I can do that, but one of the really nice things that I can do is as that business consumer, I can do just a general search and I can see that there's quite a bit of information across the solution about iPads and VPN. And I can select some things right in, from right here or I can go down and I can get information that is applicable to the thing that I'm looking for and it's going to present it in a, in, in a results way that identifies where the information is coming from. I'm just going to collapse these just for a moment so that I can speak to them a little more coherently. So we have brought information together from Service Desk Manager, from Service Catalog, from the communities, that would be the message boards, and from Google in this case. You also, if, if you have a SharePoint uh, you know, installation and you, and you have you know, valid information out there in SharePoint, there's a connector for that as well. But I can see that you know, from a service catalog perspective, I have a couple of services that are available that match my, my query. If I go and look inside of Service Desk Manager, I can see that there are a number of structured knowledge documents that have been created to hopefully help me serve myself in getting my iPad on the corporate VPN. I can also go and look at the communities, and I can see that there's a number of items in the communities, subject matter experts, people that per perhaps have, have a lot more experience than myself that are willing to help me, that are willing to share their experiences, to, to step me through. Maybe there was you know, a special little thing I needed to do. But how can I interact with the idea of the wisdom of crowds that exists in every organization and every enterprise that you know, I don't ha necessarily have to sit on the phone or interact with, with an IT analyst if there's somebody else that's willing to help me that knows how to do this. So lots of information brought forth. And of course, because everyone pretty much goes out and does a Google search anyway, we have that capability here and, and we bring back some of the top results from a, a, a Google internet search as well. Obviously, when it comes to something like a corporate VPN, you're probably not going to find specifics about about your, about your VPN set up for your corporation. But again, it's another way that we can bring information to bear into a single pane of glass. So a, a very nice way of doing that. What I'm going to do next as Jackie Brown is I'm going to go look and request a service. So as Jackie Brown, I have been given a number of services that are applicable to my role as a marketing manager. 
and I can find those here you know, at, at, at what's called you know, the feature level, or I can also navigate over here to the right, and I can see that there have been some other services that have been very well categorized. I could also search for a specific service right here. Now, for those of you who are using Service Catalog today, this is similar to the existing Service Catalog self-service interface. Going forward with, with CA Service Management 14.1 and beyond, we are advocating and strongly suggesting that you use unified self-service for all business consumer interactions. So fairly common stuff here, you know, employing um, onboarding, for example. So I could, I could drill into that, and there's a, a form that's been created. That, you know, it, it's able to give me some costs. You know, it, it gives me some recurring charges. You know, and, and these are the forms that Dale talked about earlier, how we're able to create these forms and make them lay out very, very cleanly, very, very nicely, and provide information from, from a manager perspective. You know, if I have this employee coming on board, what's it going to cost me to give him an iPad or to give give him a smartphone or give them a standard laptop. I have all that information right here at my fingertips. Other things that I can do is I can go and look at my own open requests. So I can go in there and I, and I can see that yeah, is not, let me go back there. And I can see that I have one open request here. I have a, a request that's closed, but I have nothing in my cart. And, and, and even better is that we're able to bring the status of the, of the requests forward in a manner that is meaningful to the person that's consuming the information. You know, I, I requested this, you know, this thing. I opened this ticket. You know, what's its current status? I don't have to pick up the phone and call, and call the help desk. I, I don't have to remember what the ticket number is. It's showing it right here for me, so I, I can go in and see that information completely. So in, in this case, it looks like fulfillment's in process. Eventually, it will be fulfilled, and then once it's, it's fulfilled, it will move to closure. The actual statuses are pulled out of workflow so depending upon how much you know, workflow you have behind these things is going to determine the, the, the level of, of depth that, that you see here. Now, because I have Service Desk Manager, I'm also able to use support automation through unified self-service and open up a chat session with an analyst. So another channel, rather than sitting on the phone or sending an email or opening a ticket or walking down the hall, I can have that direct one-to-one -one interaction with someone on the IT help desk when, when maybe I don't have time because I'm on a conference call and I'm having trouble you know, getting onto our web conferencing system and I'm chatting with an analyst you know, trying, to, trying to troubleshoot that. So you know, another good way of doing that is available with Service Desk Manager. I can also go and look at, at the communities that I am a member of and the questions that I have posted to those communities. Communities are, again, another channel of, of interactivity between the business consumers and the IT help desk. We're experiencing a, a little bit of lag with adoption of communities. We strongly believe and advocate that there are an enormous amount of value when they are set up properly, when they are managed correctly, when they are monitored and, and, in order to keep things moving through. So communities can be a great way to tap into those subject matter experts that exist in other areas of the company that are not necessarily IT analysts. They may indeed be IT folks, but they don't have to be IT folks. And the communities facilitates that as an additional channel of information sharing. So again, lots of things that I can do here from the unified self-service screen. You know, uh, as Alan said, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it, it's a common look and feel for CA moving forward. You'll see more and more of this across multiple solutions that CA offers. What, you're, what I'm showing here right now is actually done through a browser. I'm, I'm on, my, on my laptop using Google Chrome. There is also a mobility app for both Apple iOS and Google Android that you can use in order to access certain characteristics of unified self-service. Now, 
because of screen real estate and you know, you know, you know and trying to type on a you know a, a, on a small keyboard and and whatnot. You know, sometimes the capabilities are going to be different from what you see on a smartphone versus what you see on a tablet versus what you see in a full browser. Those are different experiences, and we have designed the mobility application to understand what type of device that you're on and present the right information. So for example, on a smartphone, rather than trying to type in a bunch of text, I can use voice-to-text capabilities of that smartphone. And rather than having to type in a bunch of, a bunch of words, I can simply you know, click on the microphone and say, I need help with you know, getting my iPad connected to VPN. And it translates that, and then I can submit that very, very quickly. So lots of value, lots of capabilities, allowing people business consumers, IT analysts, to interact with lots of different methods, lots of different channels of how you can interact with IT. Now, we also talked briefly about the well, con before you Before you jump there, I just wanted to point out the My Resources uh, option on the far left there, that they could see all their assets if uh, they wanted. That was just the one thing. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan. So, we talked about the My Resources, so what we're able to do is we're able to see the information, the software, the hardware that has been assigned to me through IT asset management, and in this case, as, as Jackie Brown, I seem to have a BlackBerry, I have some kind of a server device, and I also have a Dell Latitude laptop. So I can see that, and then I can understand, you know, um, you know what it is that's been assigned to me. So when I, it comes time to upgrade or I have to, you know, turn something in, you know, this is the, 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 the source of record. And I can also interact with these things. And, you know, so if I'm having trouble with my latitude, I can go and open a ticket directly against the latitude. I don't have to gather that information manually. The system knows about it. I can open a ticket and, and that information can flow through as well. So thank you for mentioning that there. What I wanted to do next is I wanted to transition from Jackie Brown, the marketing manager, and I want to log in as a service administrator named Jackie Tyler. So Jackie Tyler is, is, not, is not a business consumer. Jackie actually is a back-end administrator of catalog services. She's, she's out there doing you know, actual you know, IT types of things, but that doesn't preclude her from making use of and taking advantage of unified self-service. So when she does have a problem and she needs to open a request or you know, ask for something, she can do that. What she can also do is as an administrator, she can consume the services that are available to her as an administrator. So rather than having to go in and add a user into Service Desk Manager and into Service Catalog and into ITAM, we have brought to the forefront the concept of administration as a service where I can add a user here through unified self-service and on the back end that user information is properly populated across the entire solution. So I don't have to know how to log into three different systems. I don't have to remember where to go for each one. I can come here through unified self-service even as an administrator and I can fill out the form and once that form is submitted through automation and workflow, it goes and adds all of the, all the appropriate information into all the right places on the back end. So a, a huge time saver from an administration point of view. And what it really shows is the power that a service properly and well-defined can really bring to any type of role that might exist in the organization. We had talked earlier, we have the business consumers, we have the administrators, we have you know, other power users. So as time goes on, as we expose additional content for administration, again, our advocacy is going to be unified self-service is the right way to do certain types of things as an administrator. Yes, you'll always probably have to go into Service Desk Manager administration tab and, and, and do things there. We're not going to be able to surface everything. But over time, we're going to be able to surface more and more of these things to make it easier and, 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 and more streamlined and more automated for an administrator to manage the overall system. 
Alan, let me pause there for a second and see if there's anything coming through the through the Q and A chat that that we want to answer, or if there's anything that I missed that anyone wants to add. Roger, I think you hit it, uh, all the new features very nicely there. I hope everybody can see the uh, the value of this, uh, the you know not just the nice you know look of the UI, but the the productivity enhancements uh, that are delivered through this. And you know, really, regardless of the level of ITSM maturity that your shop is at, this really does hide any complexities of back end processes and you know enables the users, whether administrators or con business consumers, to really have this consumer look and feel to the uh, application they used at the workplace. So, uh, Roger, thanks a lot, and uh, I think we'll move ahead if you'll switch the uh, Back to me, thank you. All right, so what we're going to focus on now is uh, I, I think Dale will have you go through a quick roadmap slide. And uh, Roger, could you pass the ball back to me so I can change this? I am trying to do that. Yes, sir. Hold on a quick second. Okay, it should be coming through now, Alan. Yep, thank you. All right, so uh, Dale Clark, you want to take us through a quick roadmap of where we're heading next? Absolutely. As, uh, you know, we've already covered much of what we've got listed here under the existing. This is the Service Management 14.1 release, which is impending. It'll be uh, available here within the next couple of weeks. And uh, it's intended to, uh, you know, it's really focused on making sure that we're unifying the experience from a couple of different perspectives. One is helping to really reduce that total cost of ownership with you know, an installation experience that eliminates a lot of uh, some of the complexities that are involved, tying back together all of the user experience that comes along, especially from that uh, that business consumer perspective, and then, you know, really expanding out into the business value analytics and, you know, providing those kinds of capabilities. Now. As we roll a little bit forward and we start looking at the planned elements, these are items that are you know, in the works for us. These are things that we're actively pursuing right now. And uh, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of based upon a couple of main elements. Now, you've seen a lot of improvements in the general user experience that we've been putting forth on this. But one of the areas that, uh, that we've not put a ton of energy into quite yet is getting the power users, the people that use these products, you know, in a, in a very immersive way, the analysts, the, um, the uh, asset managers, the people that create the services, these people who are much more closely involved with this on a day-to-day -day basis and frequently live in these applications. We want to put together an, uh, an experience for them that's just as compelling as what we've seen for those business consumers. We want to make sure that this is something that's personalizable and adaptable for their particular use. But we also recognize that you know, many of the systems that we have in place, a great deal of the uh, adaptations and customizations that people have put into place are, uh, are, are baked into the existing approaches to delivering this. So this would be something that would be delivered on top of the existing uh, user experience approaches, but it would provide an alternative mechanism for people to have a very modern look and feel for this. Now, an, uh, another area that uh, that's very important for us from a standpoint of you know keeping that total cost of ownership down is we recognize that you as a business can't take advantage of these new capabilities unless you can get to the latest versions. Uh, we know that there's a lot of customers out there that have had uh, deep customizations done with their products. Uh, in some cases, there has been partners in and out and you know, lost information regarding what, who's done what where. So we're really looking at putting together a very low-cost service to help move our customers from whatever environment they are on currently up to the latest and greatest versions. And we're re referring to that as a migration factory. And it's really intended to make sure that we can uh, process this and get you a very quality, very supportable result coming out of the end of this. Now, one of the main areas that we've heard uh, from the communities is the need 
to provide a better mechanism for moving the product, you know, the, the configuration elements of the solution, the chain, and, and providing a better change mechanism for the solution itself, for the environment, for adaptations and customizations that may have been put in, so that they can move them from the development to the QA to the user acceptance and production environments. So uh, putting a lot of emphasis in that area. And uh, we're also going to be continuing our focus on the business value analytics side of things, where we're taking the approach of ensuring that we've got a much more robust uh, delivery of some of the time-based metrics and some of the other elements that you know currently uh, aren't simple or straightforward to retrieve out of the system uh, simply because of the data structures involved. We're looking at creating mechanisms that will make pulling meaningful business metrics out of the system a whole lot easier than it is perhaps today. Now, we're also going to continue for all of our releases to focus on those uh, community-driven enhancements. We're going to see a lot of that uh, come by in, uh, in, in the next couple of releases. But as we look even further downstream, these are the things that we've got listed as under consideration. They're areas that we believe are important and areas that we expect to be investing in going forward, but uh, they're not actively engaged. We're not immediate, you know, these aren't things that are on this next release style uh, activity. And these are some of the areas like, you know, really putting an advanced multi-language capability into place, which sort of goes well beyond, uh, you know, simply localizing or even providing multiple localized uh, versions within a single instance. It, in, it's intentional to uh, be able to get us to the point where an end user can interact with the system in whatever language they feel is uh, is most convenient for them, and that uh, that the system will handle that very effectively without it being a high overhead activity. We're also looking at you know what kind of elements we need to bring to bear regarding the reporting and analytics side. This is an area that's seeing a lot of change right now. And we do anticipate that downstream we will probably be looking at how to approach this in a different manner that, uh, that gives our customers the best bang for the buck. And one thing that I'd like to toss out there from, uh, you know, especially for this group, is the concept that we are looking to take a lot of the content that you've seen. When we talk about these services, we're looking at ways for us to be able to publish these things and to share them. And as we do that, we think that it would be very beneficial for the community to pull together to be able to promote the content that's being developed, not necessarily just from within CA and pushing that out, but also allowing you to interact with your peers within the industry to be able to get best practices and shared practices across simply by saying, hey, we've got a service that does this, here is, uh, you know, here are the elements that you might want to adjust on that for your own use. Go ahead and use it if you like. So these are areas that are, uh, are, are really where we're planning on taking this product long term. So with thanks, that, I'll Dale. turn it back to yeah. Alan. Yeah, thanks, Dale. Very good. I hope everybody can appreciate uh, what uh, our development product management teams have brought out here and uh, where we're heading to you know, keep this ball rolling in the areas that we mentioned up front that are driving this, the personas and the different business value uh, areas. Um, just a couple slides and we'll move right into the Q&A. Uh, just keep in mind that we do have a strong implementation services team in place with foundation services and acceleration services to get you started and get you, uh, you know, leveraging your investment in CA service uh, management technologies better, um, you know, especially focused on the types of things we were talking about here today. Um, across the solution set. Um, the lifecycle solutions team, who uh, also can come in and do uh, analyses and understand uh, and make recommendations on where you could improve and gain more productivity and value from the investments, and just summarizing the key areas that we focused on today. So 
At this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Lisa for, to host our Q&A session. And uh, again, you'll be able to ask questions through that or through the Q&A uh, tab here on the uh, display. So Lisa? Okay. At this time, I would like to remind everyone, in order to ask a question, press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to comply the Q&A roster. At this time, there are no questions. Okay, there's a couple out here on the uh, listing. Um, the first one I see here is, can we do? Are we continuing to sell the solutions independently? The answer is yes. There, uh, it's an easy one. There's upgrade. Uh, there'll be upgrades from existing solutions to the uh, solution that we talked about earlier, as well as the bundles I talked about earlier. So, uh, just rest assured that we'll have. Uh, be able to accommodate uh, your needs for service management across the solution set, regardless of what you have today. Um, Gail or Roger, if you see any questions in the list here that you want to address, let me know. I'm scrolling yeah, I, through them right now. I have I have been typing madly, <laughs> <laughs> trying to answer as many as I possibly can. I don't know if we'll get to all of them. Uh, question just came in: Will the slide deck be made, be made available to us? This this call is being recorded, and the recording will be posted on the service management community. It will also be, be recorded on our, on our YouTube channel. The deck itself can be made available as a PDF through the community. Thank you for the question. I have a question from the line of Mohammed. Yes, go right ahead. Okay, the question is, um, now these different products, ITAM, Service Catalog, and uh, Service Desk, uh, how is the user management going to work between these products? Uh, like, will they pull the users off of the CA contact table and uh, you don't need to authenticate them separately? And Roger or Dale take that question? Yeah, that, that's handled through the, uh, you know, we actually have that service as part of the Unified Self Service now. And essentially what it does is it allows you to pull in the information from your LDAP repository or, or whichever mechanism, and, uh, and, and it makes sure that it's populated in all necessary elements for all the installed uh, components that you've got. So you're not having to uh, handle those things independently. Okay, thanks. You see there's a question there out on the uh, list here. Support automation features, are they still available? Yes, those are all uh, part of the uh, core service desk product. They were all surfaced through the uh, through the uh, unified self-service the chat capability was, but all the service automation features are still available through Service Desk, yes. Uh, another question, what is the workflow engine behind uh, CA Service Management 14.1? That continues to be CA process or uh, automation. Um, Dale, uh, Roger, you want to elaborate on that? I know there's some maybe nuances or release levels that maybe should be announced or discussed? Sure. Yeah, so, so, so you're absolutely right. It, 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 we make extensive use of the process management for workflows engine, which is also known as Process Automation Manager, or PAM. Uh, both Service Catalog, Service Desk Manager, and ITAM all have entitlements to process automation for use w in, in context to those applications. So everything that you see in Service Catalog is driven by process automation. Service Test Manager can also make use of process automation. The version that we'll be including with CA Service Management 14.1 will be Process Management for Workflows version 4.2 Service Pack 
two. That is what we have tested with. And obviously, as, as new, new releases of these ancillary components come out, we do our best to, to do high levels of sanity checking. We're not always able to, you know, to check every single service pack and every single point release, but we, but we will support those things uh, as they come out. Any other questions on the line? I know Roger's trying to get to all the questions that are in the uh, in the list here. Yeah, one of the questions on the list uh, was that since we're since we've now got the communities element uh, incorporated with the uh, SQL Server and Oracle DBMSs, does that mean that they can uh, report upon that? And you know, the answer is that the tables are in there. Uh, we've not built specific reports that draw from the information that's in it quite yet. But it's accessible now. Okay, and I continue to madly type on the, the Q&A, and hopefully those are coming through. I, I'm, I'm sending them globally, not, not privately. If there, there's an upgrade question, if there's a up, direct upgrade path uh, to 14.1, you know, let's say for each of the point solutions, as well as to the overall CA service management 14.1. So I mean, I'll, I'll take a shot at this. Um, in, in terms of up, upgrading from the individual point solutions, you obviously have the ability to do that. Um, you know, we recommend you know taking a look at the solution though, with the capabilities of delivering the services and everything we talked about in the solution portion of the presentation. Uh, take a look at that and see if it is, you know, would provide the value that uh, makes sense for your organization to upgrade to those other to uh, you know license the uh, solution. Otherwise, uh, upgrading to 14.1 for the individual discrete products is uh, an option to you as well. All right, we're right at the top of the hour here. Is there, are there any, they all going? We've got a question from Sam Cohen. Uh, will the product structure allow for integration of third-party catalogs, allowing us to leverage the product content? Uh, the structures are in place that would, you know, you could do that as a customization, uh, and we we anticipate that some customers may go that route. Uh, we do anticipate that th that it's going to be difficult to achieve the same level of interoperability as what you're seeing with the unified self-service out of the box, though. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, we've hit our limit in terms of time. I appreciate your time today on the call. I hope you found this uh, useful. Again, this was all recorded, and uh, you have the ability to listen to it again. Um, Roger, I know, is going to keep typing here and answering all the questions he can. <laughs> and uh, if uh, you have any other questions, uh, you know, feel free to post uh, out into the communities, and uh, we'll get back. And, uh, again, appreciate your time, and uh, hope to see some of you at CA World. So thank you, and uh, have a good day. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.